This video will show you how to install the latest V4 chip, which includes the additional FPCB kit on the OLED. Let's get started. It is up to you whether you want to flash the chip with the HW FlyNX or keep using the stock firmware. I assume you already know how to do it. And also, I assume you already know how to disassemble this console. You can watch how I did it in detail from another video. Since the OLED has no visible Dead Zero connection, we need to remove the EMMC shield and install the Dead Zero adapter below the EMMC chip. From this point, you know that this insulation is not for newbies. Use a tweezer to remove the shield. Then get a nipper to cut the front side corners of the frame and remove that frame section. Now, we will install the Dead Zero adapter. In this video, I use the one with two anchors, which is better than the stock corner version. Since there are many issues when relying on the friction connection, we will reflow the Dead Zero adapter to get a permanent bond with the ball inside the EMMC chip. Apply a tiny drop of flux to the Dead Zero fork, then thin it with a low melt solder. If the solder on the fork is too thick, apply some flux, flatten it, and slide the Dead Zero adapter under the EMMC chip. Measure the diode value on the Dead Zero adapter. You should get a reading from 0.500 up to 0.800 volts. If you get nothing, please reset the adapter. After you get the value, wet the EMMC edges with flux. Now we need to reflow the Dead Zero adapter. Set the hot air rework station to 90 degrees Celsius and heat it for 1 minute. We will go slow. Now set the hot air rework station to 150 degrees Celsius and heat the MMC chip for 1 minute. We need to heat the chip gradually to avoid damage. Next, set the temperature to 200 degrees Celsius and again hit the chip for 1 minute. Finally, set the hot air to 260 degrees Celsius and leave it for 1 minute. Get a tweezer and try to pull the Dead Zero adapter. You cannot remove it if it is permanently attached. You need to reset and reflow the adapter if it is still loose. Next, we need to solder the anchors, flux the pads, and lock it down. Recheck the Dead Zero connection by measuring the diode value of point C. Now add a solder blob to point C. Get a 4cm wire and solder it to point C.
clean the MMC chip with IPA or flux remover, then reinstall the cover if you still have it. And now we will install a 3cm wire to point B. Next, flip the board and remove the CPU cover. Use a straight pin to unlatch these mini locks. And then use a tweezer to remove the CPU cover carefully. Do not lay the tweezer to any components below it, or you will break it. Use a plastic spudger to remove the thermal paste of the CPU. Then brush it and clean it with IPA or flux remover. As an update, from now on, we need to cut and remove one edge of the CPU frame from coast to coast. I did this to avoid potential shorts to the ground from the cut frame and interference from the CPU flex ribbon cable. It may sound not logical, but if you are with me, please follow this method. Clean the board with IPA or flux remover. Then spray the board with IPA. We need to do this to get a clear view while we scratch the D-point. Use the mini grinder to expose the D-point. Do not scratch the point too deep or too broad, but please expose a tiny part of the track to get a more comprehensive hold for the new FPCB later. Now add a little flux to the D-point and thin it. And for another update, we will use this new FPCB to make the installation faster and neater. Please be aware that it is tricky to install this thing and could ruin your console if you don't use the right tool. Add a little flux to the deep point pad of the FPCB and thin it. To install the FPCB easier, I use a tool like this. It acts as a third finger to hold the FPCB to the motherboard by gravity. I know it is something you cannot find anywhere, but you can make it yourself using a T-type spanner and an awl. So for example, this is the FPCB. I place it on the ground and let this tool hold the FPCB by using gravity. No more sticky masking tape. And now I will show you how to install the FPCB. First, let's apply a drop of flux to the D-point. Get the FPCB, align it, and hold it with the T-tool. Apply a drop of flux to the anchor point, the A point, and another anchor point. And begin soldering those points. Lift the T-tool, apply some flux to the D-point, and solder it. Now we will solder the 33 volt point and the ground point. Then test each of the solder point diet values. Now solder the C-point wire from the motherboard to the C-point on the FPCB.
get the CPU flex ribbon cable and thin the pads. Place the flex ribbon cable on the top of the CPU, align it, and solder the pads. Then stick a thin Kapton tape to the CPU flex ribbon cable to avoid shorts. Before reinstalling the CPU cover, we must clean it from the existing thermal paste. I use a plastic opener tool and a flex remover to clean the debris. Now get a plier and flip some part of the edges inward. Drop a small blob of thermal paste on the top of the CPU and install the cover. Now get the mochip and stick a double-sided tape below it. Connect the CPU flex ribbon cable to the mochip and stick the mochip to the top of the CPU cover. By the way, I forgot to tell you that you need to place the mochip about 1mm from the edge of the CPU cover to be in line with the FPCB nicely. Apply some flux to the mochip solder pads. Flip and align the FPCB and solder the pads. Then check each of the solder point diet values. And finally, let's solder the B point. Measure the B-point diode values. You should see a reading about 2.7 volt or 0 volt. Place the motherboard to the chassis. Stick a large Kapton tape to the top of the mochip and plug in the battery. Turn on the console and let the chip train.
At the end of the trading session, you should see some info on the screen like this. Press the power button to turn off the console. Assemble the console, insert the micro SD card containing the head spec, and boot it up. Then it will boot to Hecate, and that completes how I installed the V4 chip using the new FPCB kit. Thanks for watching this video.